Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Supposed to Nitin Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to by Bishop Ma Mari Emmanuel. And he says that Islam is explained in the book of Revelation. I believe that this is going to be a very interesting um, video listening to Bishop giving us explanation of Islam in the book of um, Revelation. So if today happens to be the first time of you taking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video i'm a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's thought or opinion or even religion but this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further ado let's get down to this video and check this out the fourth horse Pale horse Islam. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, one quarter, to kill with sword and hung with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. You look at Saudi Arabia's flag, it's green. And what's on it? Two swords. Go, Ahmed. And reading from uh, Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 to 8. So I looked and behold a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades followed him and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth one quarter to kill with sword and hung with hunger with death and by the beast of the earth. The fourth seal was opened a pale horse came out and the one who was sitting on it was death itself. Now, this is a very controversial topic. Shall I say it? Yes. For well, the truth must be said. The fourth seal, when the first one, white horse, peace. Second seal, red horse, martyrdom, persecution on Christians. Third horse, black, heresy. After heresy came the fourth horse, pale horse, Islam. Go Ahmed. Pale horse, when you go to the original text, it talks about the green color, but it's a pale green. Now, when you read the Holy Bible, when it talks about lush green, lush green represents life. Jesus never sinned, neither with thought nor with deed. Every human being sinned except Jesus Christ. That's why he is the evergreen tree, meaning the ever-living Jesus, the sinless Jesus, the Holy of Holies. This horse is imitating the green color, but it's a fake one, it's pale. With all my love and respect to the Muslim people, I don't have a problem with the Muslim people, but I've got a question mark with the faith of the Islamic world. Now, the fourth seal, a pale green pale. You look at Saudi Arabia's flag, it's green. And what's on it? Two swords. The one who was sitting on, the, on this pale horse was death. Now, which living creature spoke? The fourth one. Now, which is the fourth one? The eagle, the flying eagle. Symbolizing this symbol is to which gospel? John the beloved. Oh, how, how stunning the Holy Bible is structured. In relation to the fourth seal, the pale horse came, the false green. Trying to imitate the true green, who is Jesus. So now this pale horse is trying to imitate the original green. He is trying to imitate Christ in his divinity, but he is now pale, going against the true green. And the one who sits on it is death itself. The living creature that spoke, the flying eagle, the gospel of Saint John. Now, what is the gospel of Saint John all about? Saint John is introducing Jesus Christ to the entire world as the true divine God, and he is the Son of God. 
Hey, let's have a pause here because I know our Muslim friends will jump in the comments and just write down the Bible is corrupted and the Gospel of John is corrupted. So I wanted to save them the time and reply to that claim. So let's watch that video together and then we will continue with Bishop Monmari. I came across a video where Muslims among themselves are discussing if the Holy Bible is corrupted or not according to the Quran. And you will notice how honest they are when they talk about this important yet damaging topic for Islam. But when they debate us, they will lie about the Quran and religion. Watch how these layman Muslims get rocked in their boots when a Muslim scholar explains that the Bible cannot be corrupted according to the Quran. So ultimately, God protects his revelations. Inna nahnu dhikra. And here, a dhikra doesn't say Al-Quran. In another ayah, fas'alu ahli dhikri. Al-dhikr in kuntum la ta'lamun. So in the Quran, the Sahaba are told, if you don't know something, ask the people of dhikr, of al-dhikr. And almost all of the classical exegetes say here that ahli dhikri is ahli kitab. So if, why would you ask Jews and Christians about something if their books are corrupted? And then here, indeed, we have preserved at dhikr the totality of revelation. You go to the Islamic faith, I need to cut it short. You go to the Islamic faith, they will tell you two things. Or they will deny two things about Jesus Christ. Number one, he cannot be the son of God because that's a blasphemy. God cannot have a son. You are blaspheming. That's the Islamic faith, not me. And secondly, Jesus was never crucified, but it was shown to them as if it was Jesus. In fact, they say God put Judas Iscariot on the cross instead of Jesus. Judas Iscariot, Ahab. Islam came in 635 AD. The Gospel of John was written around 100 AD. So 500 and 35 years came after the Gospel of John. John is an eyewitness, my dear Muhammad. John is an eyewitness. He lived with Jesus. He walked with Jesus. He saw Jesus' wonders and miracles, and he documented it fresh, fresh. So you're telling me that now I need to believe in someone coming six centuries or seven centuries after the Holy Bible was documented. You want me to believe in a document that came seven centuries after the Holy Bible. You want me to believe in someone that never saw Jesus, never lived with Jesus, never walked with Jesus, over the one who walked, lived, ate, embraced Jesus Christ every single day for three years and four months. Where is the logic? The one who was with the Lord said, this is God. This is the Son of God. This is God Himself. He was crucified. He was buried. And I saw Him risen after the burial. Muhammad came in 635 and he said, He is not the Son of God. He is just a prophet. He was never crucified. In fact, Judas Iscariot was placed by God to deceive the Jews. Pale green. They come, they accept Jesus, but as a prophet only. They accept Jesus, not crucified. They accept Jesus, not as the Son of God. They accept Jesus, definitely not God. So what have you left with Jesus' name? You take the cross away, you take the Son of God away from Him, and you take the divine from Him. He's a prophet. Prophet for what? Those who wrote the Holy Bible, both Old and New Testament, are over 40 writers. It took a time frame of about 1600 years to write the entire Holy Bible. 1600 years. To write the entire Holy Bible. The entire authors, the entire writers, I should, I should say, the entire writers, different level of education, different background, 
different times, different countries, all of them wrote the same thing. That Jesus Christ is the one and only. He is the Savior, He is the Messiah, meaning God, and He was crucified, and He's going to rise from the dead, and He, whoever accepts Him, shall be saved forever. And 12 apostles, they hugged Him every day. They walked with Him. They lived with Him. They documented everything that they saw. You want me to deny all this and believe in someone that came six centuries later? Ooh. Wow. This is deep, you know. Bishop Mamari have said a lot of things that I don't even know what to even say. But then, since there are some things that I do not have knowledge of, then I think that maybe I need not to make you know, some, a comment you know, about it concerning the book of um, Revelation that he was trying to interpret um, the Saudi Arabia flag and then also um, Prophet um, Muhammad as being the one revealed you know, as the sealed, okay, that is in the Revelation that was uh, he was um, reading. Well, <laughs> I have not really think deep, you understand, know, about that. So let me just say that I have no idea, you understand, know, about it. Whether whatever he said, you understand, know, it is true or not. Maybe probably some of you could know better than I do. But then, if it were to be, you understand, know, about the person of um, Jesus Christ, of course. I'll have a lot you understand, to say concerning him about his divinity and that's why I have always maintained that um, Muslim only follow some teachings or let me put it this way they follow the teachings of Jesus Christ but they do not believe you understand, in him because when you say that you believe you understand, in him what does it um, really even mean when you say as a Muslim that you believe in Jesus because at the end of the day, you don't believe that he was crucified. You believe that it was another person that was um, put on that cross in place of him. It was made to appear to them that he was crucified, but he was not crucified. He says that he prayed and then God speared him. And then when I asked that, why did God spear him? And then nobody can tell why God speared him. And then what should be the reason why God should spare him and then he should ascend to heaven and then he should come back someday and then to come and say that people take him as God and then therefore he is not God and then he will now pray behind the Muslim and then he will now die and then will be buried. They don't just seem you know, some logical and you don't accept that it is God incarnate. You don't accept that it is God who comes in human flesh, you understand? To redeem you understand humanity from sin you don't believe you understand in that so that's why when you says that you believe in jesus then i says that no look you don't believe you understand in jesus because you just maybe know some of his teachings that's just it but then since you understand we all believe that god's word cannot be corrupted then even if the Bible is corrupted, it's not God's word that is corrupted because human can decide to try to manipulate it to make it appear that it is corrupted. But we all know that God's word cannot be corrupted. I know that a lot of you have told an opinion concerning this and then concerning some of the revelation by um, Bishop um, Mamari and I wanted to drop it at the comment section. Let's all learn from one another so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction you should like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye